Today we're going to be taking a look at the grenade launcher, engineer's very first secondary weapon. We're going to be going over every single overclock that the grenade launcher has, what its strengths and weaknesses are, what I would pair it with, and just kind of the general overview of the grenade launcher as a whole. This is not an in-depth video for any one of these overclocks, those will be saved for separate videos, so be sure to be on the lookout for those videos when they do come out. First up, let's talk about the pros and cons of the grenade launcher. The pros of the grenade launcher are that you usually have a decent amount of ammo with it. It does very well against crowds. It can do fairly well against large enemies. The fear on it is pretty nice, and it also has kind of innate armor breaking on larger enemies, although the armor breaking on the grenade launcher, funny enough, is actually bugged, which is a bit weird, so usually you don't want to take it. And with all of its overclocks, it can be surprisingly versatile and do certain jobs really, really well. The cons of the grenade launcher are that it doesn't necessarily do the most amount of damage compared to engineers other secondaries the breach cutter will still out damage it still out dps it overall and the shard diffractor has far longer effective range than it does now let's get into the overclocks our very first overclock is one of my favorites this is hyper propellant this is an unstable overclock hyper propellant changes your grenade launcher from being a grenade launcher turning it now into a railgun it does really high damage has really long range and the projectile moves extremely fast it also converts your damage type, which is kind of interesting because it says that it changes this to direct damage, which is not entirely true. This actually doesn't turn it to direct damage. It turns it to disintegration damage, which disintegration damage is calculated differently because nothing resists disintegration damage. So you just do a flat amount of damage to it. Downsides of this are that you no longer have an AOE and you also don't have as much ammo. The way I like building it is like this. So I am taking extra ammo in tier one. This is probably your best option because extra AOE damage and extra AOE really doesn't help it. Extra ammo in tier two, like I said, it doesn't really help to go with extra AOE damage. Tier 3, I'm taking Fire. Fire seems like a little bit of a strange one because you think it would cut down on your overall damage. Because Hyper Propellant converts your damage to Disintegration damage, which is just a flat amount of damage, you just get Fire stacked on top of it. So this is just a straight bonus to it. And I wouldn't really recommend taking Armor Breaking or Faster Moving Projectile. The Projectile already moves fast enough, so you probably won't even notice that. And like I said, Armor Breaking is bugged and does not work correctly on the Grenade Launcher. You also just don't really want to be hitting Armor with Hyper Propellant because it does substantially less damage. In Tier 4, we go with Randomized Damage. This is so that we can potentially hit even harder. You could go with Stun on it though. There are a couple of things that you could hit where you're probably not going to kill them with one shot and stunning them might be kind of useful. And then in tier five, we're going to spike your grenade. This just gets us more direct damage because we might as well stack even more damage on it. Very straightforward, very strong build. This also pairs really well with a lot of primary weapons. I decided to take this with Stubby and I was running the EM Refire Booster. This just gives us a higher rate of fire and this is just to spray at things at very close range. Then I use Hyper Propellant for the long range enemies. Our second overclock is the RJ250 Balanced Overclock. This one is an interesting one. This one makes it so now when we fire a grenade launcher at our feet, um, or under the feet of allies that are in the air, it will fling us or them in a particular distance. This still does damage to us, but it does significantly less damage because this does cut down on our damage. We also just get a ton of ammo with this. The way I have it set up is like this. So in tier one, I'm running extra ammo because I usually like running this for just being able to move around more. You could take AOE though. AOE is not bad. AOE damage, I wouldn't really recommend in tiers one or two. Tier 2, I'm taking extra ammo. Tier 3, I'm taking fire. This helps in two ways. One, it makes it so that you can kill grunt waves a little bit easier. The fire will linger on them and kill them, at least if they're normal grunts. Slashers and guards, it doesn't really kill them. You have to hit them again. It also works fairly well against swarmer waves. Against larger enemies, though, you're really not going to be wanting to use this particular overclock. So against Praetorians or Oppressors, it really doesn't help that much. Tier 4, I'm going to larger AoE. That one's pretty nice. You could also go with Stun here. Stun's pretty good. And then in Tier 5, I'm going to Spiky Grenade. This one is just so that we can potentially hit targets. You could go with Disabled Inertia, though. That one's not a bad option. It is a very strange one, but it's not a bad one. And to combo with this, I am taking Executioner for the Loki. Executioner for the Loki gives us really high single target damage. RJ250, we're going to primarily be using as a mobility tool and then a secondary weapon to use against smaller crowds. We're going to be using Executioner to deal with any sort of large enemies because this deals a ton of damage per second and can kill really big enemies really fast. Our third grenade launcher overclock is another very fun one. This is Fat Boy. This gives you nukes, which nukes are very, very fun to use. This makes it so you have a massive amount of AoE damage as well as you have a very large AoE. And when you fire this, you have a slow moving projectile that explodes 
causing a nuclear explosion to go off, dealing damage to the terrain so you can actually use this for mining. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not just a meme. You can actually use that fairly effectively in certain situations. And it has a radiation cloud that lingers there. You're primarily just going to be using this for crowds. Whenever you see large groups of crowds, fire a nuke into it and then switch off of it. Wait for Born Ready to reload it, and then switch back to it when you need to use it. Nukes can be really dangerous to you and your teammates though, so be careful with this, and potentially running the perk friendly is not a bad idea. This way you don't blow up your friends too easy. This is the way that I have it built. In tiers one and two, I'm taking ammo. You definitely want ammo with nukes because otherwise you just don't have very many shots with it. It doesn't really matter if you have a bigger explosion or a little bit more damaging nuke having more nukes is going to help you out more than the other options most of the time. In tier 3, fire is kind of overkill, although I do like it thematically because you have nuclear fire, and it works well against turrets, but against everything else it doesn't really help. Faster moving projectile is a better option here, that way it offsets the nuke so you can actually shoot it more reliably. Tier 4, going to larger AoE so we can cover more area, and then in tier 5 we're going to spiky grenade. You could go with proxy trigger to have a bigger AoE, but your grenades are going to be far more scary and far less reliable because if it doesn't go next to an enemy or hit an enemy directly and explode, your nuke is going to bounce around the place and it might blow up at your feet. So be careful about that. Spiky grenade is a far easier one for you to use. Now, since you don't have very many nukes, even with this build, we only have five nukes in total, one in it and four out. We're going to want a primary weapon that has a lot of bullets. For this, I'm taking mini shells for the Warthog Auto Shotgun. There's also some pretty good options for stubby, like lightweight rounds. That one helps a lot. This one for the Warthog just makes it so we have a ton of ammo. We can keep shooting smaller enemies, but we don't have as much damage. That's still okay, because we can use it as a general purpose weapon towards everything, and then just save our nukes for crowds. We're going to struggle a little bit with this build against large single targets like Dreadnoughts, I wouldn't really recommend this one for a Dreadnought mission. For our fourth build, we're going to be running Pack Rat with a Grenade Launcher, a clean overclock. That has probably the most basic sounding effect in the game. You get two more ammo. That's all it does. It's good because you get two more ammo, you essentially get a tier one or a tier two for the Grenade Launcher, and it makes it so if you don't want to take either of those options, you can, or if you just want more ammo, you can still run the Grenade Launcher however you'd like. This is the way I have it built, so extra AoE in tier one, more ammo in tier two, Faster moving projectile in tier 3, stun in tier 4, and spiky grenade in tier 5. You can really build this however you'd like though, it is a clean overclock, so however you like running the grenade launcher, this one will work just fine. Same goes with whatever primary weapon you want to take with it. For me, I decided to take this with turret EM discharge for stubby, and this gives me a lot of AoE, gives me a lot of slowdown, and it does decently well against single targets as well. For a fifth overclock for the grenade launcher, we have compact rounds. This one is almost tied with pack rat for being as basic just this one's a balanced one we lose that on a slight amount of aoe radius and a slight amount of area damage but we get five more max ammo which is really good i like running this all for ammo so in tiers one and two i'm taking extra ammo in tier three i'm taking fire so we can potentially make a little bit more use of these against crowds tier four i'm taking the larger aoe and then in tier five i'm taking proxy trigger so that i can just blow this up on whatever crowd i see this one's also basically a clean overclock you can run it however the heck you'd like you just get more ammo you have slight nerfs to your weapon in terms of aoe radius and uh direct damage but not really enough to really matter it's a fine overclock. If you like tons of ammo, take this. I decided to take it with magnetic pelt alignment. This way I can just use the grenade launcher for crowds. And then if there's anything at a further distance, we can use a shotgun to clean it up. And then our final overclock for the grenade launcher is clean sweep, which is another very basic overclock. This one gives you a slightly bigger AOE radius and slightly more area damage. It's a clean overclock, so you can run it however you'd like. It works well with any build that you want to throw on it, whether you want to go with AOE, ammo, fire, stuns all of that you can take all of it if you want to i'm running extra ammo in tiers one and two extra speed in tier three extra aoe in tier four and then spiked grenade in tier five but again run it however you'd like you can also run this with whatever you like i decided to take it with a racer and i went with max lock-ons with a racer so i could use this against crowds and against single targets that are further away and then i can just use clean sweep for just regular crowd control the green launcher has nothing but good overclocks they're all really strong in their own ways. They give you some very unique options like RJ250 with movement or hyper propellant or nukes for the extremes of single target damage or the extremes of AOE damage. Very fun weapon and you can't really go wrong with any of these. They're all really solid. Same goes with most of the builds that you want to run with them. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it helped you out. If you'd like to see the other videos in this series, there should be a playlist somewhere over here. Over here, I forget which direction it is. Be sure to click on that and it will take you to a full playlist of all these videos.